This is the Ask Foleschini podcast, where the modern economy is discussed from a skeptic's perspective. Mr. Foleschini helps you distinguish what is sustainable in our economy and what isn't. Not everything that glitters is gold, and not all mud is dirty. The podcaster Mr. Foleschini provides no-nonsense advice. He had it all, lost it all, went bankrupt multiple times, and is now attempting to come back from zero with sustainable growth. There are numerous coaches and preachers on the internet that preach about positive thinking and how life is all roses if you just care to see it that way. Well, Mr. Foleschini is definitely not one of them. We recommend you ask Foleschini to keep it real. He discusses the darker side of the current economic reality, the side that's more important for your personal and business finance. His first intention is to help you keep what you already have. Not to be a complete party pooper, Mr. Foleschini will also hint at the earning opportunities in the economy today. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please like, share, and subscribe. And now it's time to start taking notes. The mic goes to the podcaster, the one and only Mr. Foleschini. Welcome to the Ask Foleschini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Peter Christian from Greater Tampa Bay Area. Peter has been hands-on executive for over 40 years and has been a trusted advisor to, le- to all levels of management, especially new and middle managers. Peter brings practical knowledge to solve problems and to help individuals grow and succeed. He listens to the person or persons he's working with and understands their concerns and issues. Peter then provides focused and realistic approaches to address and resolve their problems. Peter played a key role in the 700% growth of Crayola over 17 years with the company while working in entry-level managerial and executive positions. After leaving Crayola, he has worked with 300 plus companies ranging from million dollars to Fortune 100 enterprises. Peter has helped their managers to personally grow and succeed while assisting them in reducing costs and increasing profitability by millions of dollars and adding and saving thousands of jobs. Peter is also a best-selling author of um, on Amazon of the books uh, What About uh, Vermit Problem and, influences, uh, and Influencers. Peter has also contributed a number of articles to professional journals. Peter, please tell us more about yourself. What is wow. your story? You cover quite a bit, but uh, okay. So I have uh, 40 plus years in industry, uh, both working in industry and also consulting to industry. I started my own enterprise in 2002 with five other people in order to help businesses to uh, to succeed, to uh, get past where they're at, whatever their issues might be, and to grow and to prosper. So uh, I've, I've done a quite a bit of, of uh, work in that area. Uh, I officially retired, and I always put quotes around that because people tell me that I'm busier than most people they know that work, but that's okay. Uh, but I retired the end of 2018 from my company, uh, moved to Florida, uh, have gotten into writing. As you mentioned, I have two books that are authored and published. Uh, I continue to write articles uh, that I publish on my own site and send out on LinkedIn and so forth. Uh, I do podcasts such as yours to uh, to help individuals uh, to succeed in their enterprises. Uh, I am an adjunct professor back in Pennsylvania, even though I live in Florida, and I teach project management twice a year uh, and certify people in project management through the university. Uh, and uh, then I have some free time where I actually enjoy myself and do all sorts of other fun things. So uh, I'm I'm pretty busy. But right now, what my idea is is to help other people, whether it's students that are just getting out into the working world or entrepreneurs such as your listeners who are uh, finding their way in the world and may have some difficulties to provide some guidance and help to them. Oh, that is great. Uh, let, let, let me uh, start with the question. Would sure. you uh, Would you believe that it's better that students starts business immediately or they should find the work and work for a company for a couple of years in order to understand all the processes and ins and out of uh, businesses uh it can work both ways i know some students uh one back in pennsylvania they started an enterprise while they were still going to school uh they make uh, uh filters and pumps for um uh, aquariums 
uh, and they are one of the most successful companies in regards to that. So they started out very early. They were still in school when they started their enterprise, and now it's probably a $30 million company. So, uh, uh, so they've done very well. Other people might need a little bit more time, uh, a little bit more seasoning, uh, perhaps in the working world. Uh, like myself, when I graduated, uh, I got offered a job to work for a top uh, consulting firm out of New York City, Price Waterhouse. It wasn't Cooper's at the time. It becomes Price Waterhouse Cooper since then. Uh, but I didn't feel that I was quite ready uh, in order to go in and talk to seasoned people about uh, their experiences and to give them advice because I didn't really have the background at that point. Once I had developed that working out in the, in the real world for about 20 years, then I felt I was ready and then I got into the consulting world. So it, it really depends on the individual, what your motivation is, uh, what your likes are, uh, what your aptitudes are at a particular time. Um, so I, I think it can work in, in any fashion. It can either be you come out of school and you're ready to go and, and you get going or you feel that you need a little bit more experience and knowledge before that. So you go and work with somebody for a while and then you start your enterprise. It took me 20 years to start mine and uh, it worked out well. Uh, other people start right off the bat and boom, they're very successful. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned Price Waterhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your opinion on the big four consulting companies? Uh, would would uh, an average business be better off hiring the big four or um, an individual consultant like uh, uh, yourself or um, uh, some freelance consultant? W what would you recommend to, let's say, a small business owner? I would think that they should go with someone a bit smaller. The big guys are really set up to work with the big companies. Uh, quite honestly, in you know the the ratio or, or the the number of people uh, who work in large consulting firms and stay there for probably more than two years is very very small. Uh, those enterprises want to get uh, people into the large companies because they now have an end to those companies to do consulting work because they've kind of placed their folks. So that's their interest. Uh, they do good stuff. Uh, but they're also big, they're expensive, uh, and they may overwhelm a small company. Plus, uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, but uh, the company that offered me a job, uh, we actually went up against uh, in one company at a, a point where we were both consulting. Uh, I was uh, obviously had a much smaller concern than they did. Uh, and we continued to work with the enterprise, whereas they kind of got the boot out. And the reason was Myself and my folks were very involved with the people on the factory floor, talking to all sorts of individuals, having meetings and so forth. And then we would come into the meeting with the uh, vice president and we would have facts and figures and stories to tell and, you know, instances of what was going on. They would bring in books and articles and stuff and lay them out on the table. And uh, he finally got disgusted and said, uh, you know, you guys aren't bringing anything to the party. These folks are actually getting their hands dirty and you give me stuff that I can pick up and, and read in a library or online or whatever the case may be. So they kind of tossed them out and kept us. Uh, I think that the small consulting firms uh, probably can relate better to small companies. Now, there again, you have to be careful because not all consultants are good consultants. So you've really got to do your homework and find out uh, who is a good fit for you, who's actually going to do the work, who cares about you and wants to actually like become part of your company. That's what I always felt in, in my concern. When we were doing an engagement with a company, we became part of the company. So we were invested in their success. We wanted to see them succeed. We didn't just care about the check that we got at the end of every month or whenever we got paid. Um, and if they weren't doing well, then we took that personally because there may be something that we weren't doing right. So I think there's a closer tie with smaller consulting firms to small firms such as probably your listeners have. Uh, and they should check them out before they get involved with the big three or four, or whatever it is, the McKenzie's and the Price Waterhouses and, and so forth. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. You already sure. answered my my uh, next question. 
how to okay. choose the right consultant. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do your due diligence. Talk to your uh, talk, talk to your business compatriots uh, who may have used folks. Uh, don't just use a friend or somebody you know or or go on reputation because reputation is not always a good thing. Um, find out and, and really do a good job of, of researching and, and getting to know them and start with a small engagement. Don't give them something big right off the top and see how well they do. You know, it might be uh, something as small as, let's say, a $5,000 engagement. Now, to some people, that might seem like a lot, but in consulting world, $5,000 is not a lot of money. Um, but do something small. See how that how you interact. See how they work with you. Do they listen to you? Uh, how concerned were they? Uh, is it all about the money and the engagement, or do they really care about you? And then you go from there. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sure. I, I think this is a great insight. Thank uh, you. Start small and uh, and grow. Yeah. The interaction, and if interaction yep. is positive, then just uh, go from there. Sure. Um, Another thing I would also like to to discuss with you because you're an expert um, is uh, in these times there are a lot of coaches available. Yes. So how would you distinguish uh, between coach and consultant? Consultant usually gets involved in a specific project. They're not as personally invested in the individual, although it may lead to that depending on what the engagement is. But um, they're not involved so much in the individual and trying to guide them as they are in the overall concern, the business concern. You know, is there an issue with productivity and, and what is that? Not, you know, uh, uh, is the manager a good fit and is he doing a good job as a manager unless that comes out in, in the study that that's a cause of the, the productivity. Um, but then it, it may not be to fix that individual, but to say maybe you need to replace them or put them in a different position or whatever the case may be. Um, a, a coach is more to your style, uh, how you go about making decisions, um, uh, how you manage or lead your, your organization, uh, that type of thing. And it becomes a more personal type of thing. Now, there there can be a a blurring of that uh, in cer certain engagements, but by and large, consultants deal with trying to fix some things, not necessarily people, and coaches deal more on the individual personal side and not so much with trying to fix things as trying to fix individuals or, or guide individuals. So if I understand correctly, uh, consultants uh, care more about the process and coaches uh, take more uh, care about uh, the people? By and large, yes. Now, again, that, that could vary a little bit, you know, depending on the individual and the circumstance. But by and large, yes, you're correct with what you just said, in okay. my opinion. Um, in these uncertain times, uh, would you say that there is more need to hire a consultant? Or would you recommend a small business owner um, to, to, to try to, to learn new skills and uh, do as much as they can on their own? Um, again, it really depends. If you have tried to do certain things and they're not working, you may need a different point of view. Uh, you may be too close to the situation, in which case it's good to bring a consultant in because they should provide an objective viewpoint, including if you're part of the problem, uh, in order to make things happen. Uh, so if you've tried and it just isn't working, then it, it would be good to bring somebody else in. If you just run into a problem right off the bat and you haven't done anything about it, uh, to jump to a consultant right off the bat could be um, a little impetuous on your part. Uh, so try to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, fix things on your own. Again, you've got other business contacts, people that you deal with, whether they're suppliers or clients or, or um, just business associates through professional organizations. And you, uh, there are a lot of organizations where they meet. Uh, Vistage is one where a number of business owners meet and they talk about problems in their organization and they get information from other business owners that they can use and utilize. And, and it works out very well for them. Uh, and there are other organizations similar to that. So you might try that first. I wouldn't jump automatically to a consultant. Uh, I would try some things first. 
Uh, but if they're just not working, then uh, you may have to take that route. Uh, because again, there are too many consultants out there, people who get let go in business for one reason or other, and they go, oh, well, I'm going to be a consultant now. Well, not everybody should be a consultant. All right. Some people just aren't cut out for it. Um, and, and just like they shouldn't be an insurance salesman or a financial advisor, or all sorts of stuff. People jump into things for all sorts of crazy reasons because they think that, well, there's an opportunity for me there. So again, you have to be careful with consulting. Uh, as to who you hire and what their expertise and background are, and if they if they really are a good fit for you. Uh, would you agree that uh, the harder the times or the more demanding the market, there is more need for consulting? Um, uh, possibly, possibly. Uh, things are getting so complicated. Things are moving so quickly. Uh, it's hard to keep up on all the technology and the changes that are occurring, and good consultants bring that to the party and can help organizations. So I would say that in our times, probably a bit more uh, use of consultants is probably in order. Uh, by the same token, again, if you haven't tried to fix anything on your own, and because again, the consultant is there to advise you. They're not going to be the doers. At the end of the day, you and your folks are going to be the doers. You're the ones who are going to take whatever those the folks are that you're working with, recommend and institute them and run them. Because someday that consulting engagement is going to end. And I always told that to my clients. And if they haven't agreed to what we're doing, if they don't understand it, if they don't own it, the day I walk out the door, if all of the um, the good stuff that we developed goes out the door with me, then the consulting engagement was a failure and, and they failed in what they were doing because it, it's up to the individual, the company and the, uh, the person owning it or running it uh, to take a hold of that and to make the changes that are necessary. The consultant is there to help you, but not to do it for you. Because when you turn it over to them, when you, you turn over your success to them and put it in their hands uh, and they leave, then it leaves with them. So you have to realize that before you get involved with consulting, that they're there for a particular reason, but not to make you successful in and of them uh, by themselves. You're ultimately the one that's going to make yourself successful. Okay. Uh, right now, there's a huge trend in the middle size and uh, large companies that they do uh, their own consultant. Uh, okay. So they they uh, insource uh, consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say is uh, the better or more efficient way, outsourced consultants or insourced? Well, I started kind of as an inside consultant, uh, which is why then when I got into the consulting world, because it was recommended that, you know, you, you've pretty much done consulting uh, with the organizations that you were at. You were making changes and, and looking for improvements and so forth. So why don't you do that with a variety of folks? Um, so it works that way. Uh, but also sometimes uh, companies get complacent and can, internal consultants get complacent and they also have to deal with the internal politics in, in companies. All right. And they may not be able to speak as freely about things as an outside person who comes in, uh, has no biases, uh, has no connection to the owners and the managers and so forth, and will hopefully give you that straightforward, unbiased um, uh, recommendation uh, or recommendations uh, in order to make improvements. Also, And unfortunately, the longer you're with an organization, you hate to say it, but you become part of the furniture, so to speak. And, mm -hmm. and managers don't listen to internal people as much as they do somebody from the outside. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I would work with an organization and uh, talk to the folks and they would have some very good ideas and they say, but nobody is listening to us. And I would suggest it and they go, oh, well, that's wonderful. Uh, as though I was some brilliant person and they had somebody right there who had told them the same thing and they weren't listening to them. So I gave credit where credit was due, but unfortunately that happens. I remember vice president I worked for 
And he said, even as a an executive going into a, a new firm, he said, you got about a year to make the changes you want to. He says, after about a year, you become part of the furniture, you become part of the, you know, the 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 group, and and they don't listen to you as much. He says, but in that first year, they're so happy that you're there, and they want to listen to you, and you got all these great ideas. And he said, so you really have to make your mark then. And then he says, then after that, it's just kind of managing it. So you gotta you gotta make your mark. You gotta establish the things you want to establish early on. Because if you wait too long, they'll stop listening to you. And then they want to look for the next person and so forth. Um, as long as internal people are staying up with the latest trends and bringing that stuff into play in, in the organization, that's great. In some cases, they don't, in which case then you need to bring an outside person in. Because, like myself, I dealt with 300 different companies. And I was able to take something that I did in one company and not do it exactly in another, but do a variation of it, and it would work because I had seen a similar problem, I had an experience, and I could uh, could utilize that experience in order to uh, to do whatever it was with the organization that I was working with. I was also able to bring disparate organizations together. I might have somebody in the food industry, and there was somebody, let's say, that was in the metalworking industry that was doing a really good program. Let's say it was inventory control. Uh, they wouldn't normally talk to each other, but I would be able to bring them together, and the food person could go talk to the person in the metalworking industry uh, and, and learn some, some new techniques and processes and so forth, and they could talk about things. Because businesses, by and large, have some commonalities, even though they do different things. As long as they're not competitors, because competitors don't tend to talk to each other. They don't want to certainly give a leg up to their competition. Um, but a lot of companies are willing to share with others if they're, if they're not in danger of uh, losing some business because of it. So, uh, again, you know, there's no right answer, internal or external. Uh, you have to take each and deal with them appropriately. All right. And again, do your due diligence uh, and make sure that you're listening to your internal people uh, because they have a lot of good ideas and don't just shut them off because they've been there for five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, out of your experiences mm -hmm. uh, in companies, uh, is there more personal problems or um, that Ob that the, they are the biggest obstacle to growth. Are there personal problems of the people involved, or are there uh, technical problems and lack of skills? What, what, what is the number one reason uh, that business don't grow faster or as fast as market would allow? Uh, in some cases, they try to move too fast. Uh, companies that try to over automate themselves before they've got the basics down, uh, whether it's in equipment to produce something or it's in systems, you know, they want to buy the biggest and the best. Somebody wants, they just started business and they want to put an Oracle system in. Well, Oracle is too freaking big for them. I'm sorry. Uh, but yet they put it in and they spend millions of dollars on it and then it doesn't function and they said there's just a system problem. No, it isn't. Start small. All right. As a small organization, you smart with small software. Uh, and as you grow, then you increase the size of the software and the complexity and so forth. But if you start too big, uh, you overwhelm yourself and uh, you can't keep up with it and it's going to fail. And I've seen organizations that do that. Uh, also, uh, if you can't do it on a piece of paper, you're certainly not going to do it on a computer. All right. Uh, so to, uh, I've seen so many organizations that will put large systems in and they don't put the data in correctly or the data is wrong. Uh, it's corrupted. Uh, it's bad. Uh, all sorts of stuff. There was nothing wrong with the system. Systems just calculating whatever you put in there and, and told it to calculate. And if you gave it bad stuff to, to, to work with, you're going to get bad stuff out. There's that old uh, saying, "Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. Well, nothing is truer in regards to that. Uh, companies that over-automate, uh, you know, usually you start with some equipment in a semi-automatic fashion, and as you grow and, and you have a greater demand, then you automate, and that people that start off automating to the 
to the max and and spend millions and millions of dollars okay on the best and greatest equipment well if they don't have the volume to handle it if they don't have the experience and the knowledge to handle it you need uh good t mechanics and technicians to work with the equipment if you don't have all of that again so what that you spent all that money you're going to create problems for yourselves. So you start small, and as you continue to grow, then you add to it. Uh, and over time, you will get to where you want to be. Uh, I, I look at uh, something like Amazon, and I see the picture of Bezos when he started, and he was in a desk in his garage. Okay, well, he's not in his desk in a garage anymore, but that's what it took to start Amazon. He didn't start in some large office building with mega computers and thousands of people working and, and all that stuff. He grew it and grew it over time. Uh, well, the same is true in any small enterprise. You, you need to do the same thing. Be patient. All right. Uh, it will come as it comes. If you grow quickly, that's terrific. All right. Uh, recognize the growth, add on appropriately the resources that you need, whether it's people, equipment, systems, whatever the case may be. But don't try to do it all at the beginning and then grow into it. That, that's the wrong, in my opinion, that's the wrong way to go. I think there's more failures of companies that do that than companies that start small and grow uh, and, and keep adding as they go along. I think it's seven out of 10 uh, companies fail within the first five years. Well, there's good reason for that. And, and it's because they've, they've tried to move too fast and spent too much money up front and it didn't work. Okay, I would like to know uh, you as a consultant, how do you feel about the buzzwords? Uh, because every year or so there is a buzzword, industry 4.0, uh, digitalization, uh, I don't know, everything is uh, zero zero emissions, all, all this stuff. How, how do you feel about all these buzzwords? Uh, when, when the client comes and says, okay, we want to be industry 4.0 compliant by tomorrow. Uh, very quick story. Uh, a number of years ago, I met Dr. Joseph Duran. For any of your listeners who aren't familiar, Duran was one of the quality gurus uh, uh, of his time, uh, and he still probably is. People refer back to him, and, and uh, uh, he, he was just a brilliant man. And I got to meet him at a function. He was surrounded by people, and all of a sudden, everybody just kind of disappeared for some reason, and he was standing there by himself. And my friend and I were standing there and we were made eye to eye contact. And he said to us, so tell me what it is that you do. Well, I worked for Crayola at the time and we were into all sorts of things. All the latest buzzes, as you said, JIT and uh, TQC and SPC and you name it. We probably. So my friend is going through and he's telling all of this stuff. And he must have rattled off 10 or 12 different things that we're involved in. Mm -hmm. Got all done, and Duran looked at us, and he says, you know what it sounds like to me? Sounds like you got alphabet soup. He says, pick one thing. He says, and do it, and do it well. He says, good, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, they're all kind of the same. He says, but somebody takes, and they put a little bit of a tweak on it, and they sell it as their program, and it's the latest and greatest, and the people go rushing over to that, and then the next person takes and puts a little bit of a tweak on it, and they go rush... He says, and you're rushing here and you're rushing there and you never put anything into place and you never follow through with it. He says, if you pick one thing and you do it well, he says, and then, yeah, there'll be innovations, you know, there'll be new systems that come out and, and so forth. And you can integrate them over time. But if you keep taking what you have and tossing it to the side and going with the latest and the greatest buzz, he said, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. He says, and you're going to confuse your people and they're going to go, well, why should I wa worry about working on this? Because in six months we'll be doing something different anyway. So I'll just wait six months and find out what the next thing is. Uh, we used to call it flavor of the month club. I don't know what they call it these days. Okay. Uh, and that had a big impact on me. And I found out that he was absolutely 100% correct. You know, as, as you look at the things that they're throwing out there, there are some things that are very, very good, okay, um, and, and they deserve to, uh, to to get their due. But there's tons of stuff out there where, like Duran said, somebody just put a little bit of a spin on it, and they're selling it today because they want to differentiate themselves. Well, that's great for them. Let them differentiate themselves. Do what you do and do it well. Stay up with the latest trends. Realize what your customers want. 
satisfy your customers, be willing to make the changes that are necessary, but you don't have to reinvent the company every six months. If you try to do that, that's what you're going to wind up doing, and you will not satisfy the business needs of, of your client and, and the industry. Mm -hmm. So be careful about buzzes. Yeah, great insight. Thank you for that. Uh, Thank Dr. Duran for that. <laughs> A brilliant man. Yeah. Um, so before we close, I have one more question for you. Sure. Uh, what can be learned from by Googling? What by watching uh, videos? And what skills cannot be achieved without consultant? Well, uh, there's tons of information out there. Uh, you know, anybody who says I can't find something isn't looking hard enough because you can Google almost anything at any time, anywhere. So what, what is it that you really want to look at? What is it that you really want to improve on? Go ahead and Google it. Uh, find out uh, locally uh, what universities, uh, colleges, or, or uh, organizations are providing um, classes. Uh, you know, uh, whether it's instructional for a day or whether it's over a, a number of weeks or whatever. Uh, again, talk to uh, your, the fellows in your industry and also your business compatriots in, in the area that you're in. Find out what they're uh, getting into and, and, and what they're uh, up and about and how that matches with what your needs are. And again, you shouldn't have millions of needs. If you do, you're doing something very, very wrong. You should have a need or two. Uh, when Ra Reagan was president, he said, and this is the president of the United States, so he's dealing not with a, a company, he's dealing with millions of people that live throughout the United States. You can only focus on three things at one time, max. Mm -hmm. So you should limit it to that. So pick your number one, number two, and number three things that are really important to you and focus on them. If you need more information, if you need more education, if you need more skill, either personally or through individuals that you have in your organization, uh, research that and do that. When I took over as the project manager at uh, Crayola for project engineering, uh, I was told to get in and take the project management courses, which I did at the American Management Association. After I went through that, each of the people who worked for me, and I believe I had about eight or nine folks, each had to go through that because I wanted them to know the same things I knew, where I was coming from. We were speaking the same language. We didn't all use the same tools all the time, but at least we were dealing in, in a... Uh, a setting that was familiar to each of us and, and we knew where we were coming from and then we went from there so if you're going to do something like that again you don't need to be the expert on everything that's why you have people working for you if the company is entirely reliant on you for everything that's a big mistake when i started my consulting enterprise the first and foremost thing i said is Besides getting new clients and building the business, I want to establish a company where when I retire, the company continues. When I walk out the door, the company shouldn't fold because I left and I took all the knowledge, expertise, clients, whatever with me. Well, it's been four years now. They're doing quite well, okay, which means that we established a good thing. Uh, it got turned over to good hands. They continue to do it, and I accomplished what I wanted to do. It's It's sustaining. It didn't end because I walked out the door. And you have to have that same feeling. If you got hit by a bus tomorrow, that company should continue, all right, without you because you've put the things in place for them to do that. If you get hit by the bus and the company folds because you no longer can run the company, you got big problems. So keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything... Uh else you would like our listeners to take from this interview any quick tips or any secrets uh, you can share um be consistent uh be committed when you say that you're going to do something do it okay and do it properly don't take shortcuts all right too many people try to take shortcuts i remember when uh, again i worked at crayola and just in time was a big thing well, just in time had certain aspects to it, and some of our executives thought that they were going to Crayolaize it. Uh, well, it didn't work, okay? 
uh, because they weren't willing to do the things that were necessary in just in time, and therefore it, it didn't work so well. And yet they thought they were doing just in time. They weren't. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. Uh, so be careful about that. If you're going to take something on, make sure you understand what it's about, how to do it, and then follow through with it, okay? And you're going to have setbacks. And when you do, don't give up. Just find out what went wrong, fix it, and move on. Uh, we all have setbacks. Things don't always work the way we anticipated the first time out uh, because we've got to get good at it and we've got to learn it and we've got to understand it. So do that, okay? And be patient. And again, if you've tried and it isn't working, then bring some outside help in to, to assist you until you get it straightened out. Pay attention because, again, ultimately you're responsible for it. Make it happen and you'll do just fine. And be one of those three out of 10 companies that succeed, not fail in the first five years. And you'll do it. Thank you. Sure. I will put uh, links to your uh, books and where people can reach you uh, in the description below. And okay. uh, thank you, Peter, for being my guest tonight. Thank you very much for having me. I hope I was a help to folks and uh, feel free to get in touch with me if you would like to talk some more about your own situation and how I, I might be able to provide some advice to you. Thank you, Mr. Faleschini, for this outstanding podcast. And thank you for listening to the Ask Faleschini podcast until the end. Mr. Faleschini would love to hear your feedback in the comments. And don't forget... If you want to know, ask Faleschini or listen to the Ask Faleschini podcast. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.